Back in 1996, when I first wrote my article in defeat of the Ritvik Ross path, my main argument was that because Srila Prabhupada was no longer physically present, he was no longer able to make his own decision to accept or reject the new initiates. This applied to Srila Prabhupada or any other pastacharya. My argument was that you can't force a guru who is no longer present in this world to accept you as their disciple. The guru has to be present so that they can make that decision to accept you or not accept that aspiring disciple. This had become the main reason why I considered the ongoing Ritvik system of initiation to be bogus. But now as I progressed on my research and analysis of this issue, time and time again, my logic deduction kept pointing me toward the Ritvik Ross path. All the points and logical deductions kept bringing me to the conclusion that Srila Prabhupada never wanted a multi-guru system in ISKCON mission, that he had only wanted to continue with the Ritvik representative system he had established. So I finally had to analyze this, my own previous argument, against the Ritvik representative of the Acharya path. That argument was that the guru needs to be present in this world to make his own choice whether or not to accept the person as his disciple. That you can't force a guru who isn't present to accept you. For so many years, I kept telling myself that the Ritvik system was bogus due to this one argument alone. But then the realization came. I had already defeated that argument for a long time. I just didn't realize it. Actually, I didn't defeat it. Srila Prabhupada had. But the understanding as to how it was defeated was there, and I just didn't realize it until then. In the end, it was, a very, it was very simple to defeat this argument. The fact is, that argument is correct, and it, it applies to all other pastacharyas. It just doesn't apply to Srila Prabhupada. No other pastacharya can accept disciples without their being present to make that choice. So therefore, you can't just force them to accept you. You can't just force Rupa Goswami or Nityananda Prabhu to f accept you as their disciple without them being present to make that final choice to accept you. So yes, that argument is fully correct, and it applies to all past acharyas. It just doesn't apply to Srila Prabhupada. He can do this. There, you see how simple it was to defeat this my own main argument against the Ritvik system? So simple. I mean, why did it take me so many years to figure that one out? Huh? What? Uh, what do you mean you don't accept this argument? Uh, so, oh, you want to know why I am saying you can't force another Acharya to accept you as a disciple, but then I say that doesn't apply to Srila Prabhupada. Oh, oh, okay, you want me to explain it? You, fine, no problem, I, I can explain it. And that's simple also. As I've recently explained, Srila Prabhupada had begun delegating more and more aspects of the process of initiation for at least nine years or ten years leading up to the July 9th. Uh, letter in 1977. Then he de delegated the last physical aspect of the initiation process. Thus he created a 100% initiation by proxy process. One very vital aspect of the 100% proxy process was assessing the new members. And this aspect is one of the very first, it is the very first, aspect of this, this Ridvik system that Srila Prabhupada had delegated back in probably the late 1960s, at least by the late 1960s or 1970 at the very latest. He had delegated that to the temple presidents, that they were to assess whether the potentially new disciple has met the criteria of becoming one of Srila Prabhupada's disciples. When the temple president made their assessment and considered a certain devotee met the criteria Srila Prabhupada had established for giving either first or second initiation, the temple president would write a letter of recommendation and send it to Srila Prabhupada. Yet, right up until the July 9th letter of 1977, only Srila Prabhupada himself could accept those recommendations. 
with his instructions given in the July 9th letter, he now delegated that last aspect where he now authorized and gave a position called the Ritvik representative priest. He now authorized those Ritvik representatives to accept those recommendations on his behalf. That was the final and last aspect that now created a 100% proxy system for giving initiation. Srila Prabhupada was now able to accept new disciples without the need for any physical presence or involvement in the process at all. He had delegated the assessment and the acceptance of those assessments of the new uh, disciples to the system that he had set up. No other pastacharya had ever set up or authorized such a system. Therefore, the argument that we can't force pastacharyas to accept disciples without their consent still applies to all other pastacharyas. But it doesn't apply to Srila Prabhupada because no one is, first of all, no one is forcing him to accept. Srila Prabhupada had authorized a process by which the temple presidents will assess the new perspective initiate and then send the recommendations to the nearest authorized Ritvik representative who then accepts those recommendations on Srila Prabhupada's behalf. Srila Prabhupada had authorized a complete and full system to do all of this on his behalf. No other pastacharya had ever done that. <clears throat> Therefore, only Srila Prabhupada can continue to accept disciples via this authorized system. And that system can only be applied to him because he's the one who set it up and authorized it. It can't be applied to any other pastacharya because no pastacharya ever authorized such a system. No pastacharya ever delegated those aspects. All of the physical aspects of the initiation process an authorized priest to accept those recommendations, etc. So, no, the system cannot be applied to any other pastacharya, but it can and is supposed to be and should be applied for Srila Prabhupada. So, this argument that I clung on to for many years was now fully defeated as well. And this brings us to the end of part six. When you're ready, you can tap on the button. Uh, for part seven. All right. Hare Krishna. Haribo.